Hello, King's Zaney. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pals in through that door. The badge has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop breathing. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window. And ultimately, what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. Around 10 million people in the UK are over 65. I suppose, I hope that's not for me. Yeah. Oh, no. Just oh. to help you keep your hand up. They make up almost a fifth of all A&E patients. Could I want this gentleman to go into high arm That's all right, I'm, I'm OK, don't worry about no, it. No, look at his finger. Look, it's, it's all right. My, no, my name's William Andrews. Rather grand because they put Henry in between, so I'm a double king, if you see what I mean. <laughs> I don't conquer very much. And I was born in 1929, which was the year of the Wall Street crash. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's really... Oh, God, that's a big flap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William runs his own metalwork business and has injured his finger. I thought I it was just a, a cut. No, 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 I said... He's 83 years old. Like I, said, I think he did a really good job in his dressing. I oh. pulled it round and tightened it right up. Yeah. Bring your hand round here, sweetheart. Can you feel this? Yeah, I can feel that. What about this side? Yeah, I feel that. It's that, oh, it's that bit yeah. I can't feel. Yeah, OK, that's fine. That's fine. I was making a stainless steel filter unit. I tried to save it from dropping on the floor. But unfortunately, it just carried on and <laughs> and uh, s sliced a small piece from my finger and then dropped on the concrete floor. So it was a worthless effort, in effect. <laughs> do you know what? Mm. I didn't do a bad job with masking tape. No. All, what I did, I got a large, large elastoplast, wrapped it round, and then got some micropore. And and wrapped round. it round and round and done. And then I've got some masking tape that you use for the car repairs yeah. and that. And then tighten that round. <laughs> well, you know, you probably did a better job than we have no, done here. No. <laughs> I've always been interested in engineering. I've got an interest in things. People ask me questions and they want me to solve problems if they've not come up against it before because as you must realise, the majority of people I come up against are rather y younger than myself. Do you know something? When I read about the National Health Service, 
I, I'm sorry that people like me, who don't use common sense, create the problem. No, don't be daft. Which seems quite ridiculous, really. The I am a burden business is quite unique to, to the older age group. Nobody wants to be ill. Nobody should feel guilty for having an accident. I wish I'd have just let the bloody thing drop on the floor, honestly. Next time, let it slide. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly your, you, you hit the nail right on there, bugger yeah. it. <laughs> King's is everything. Your worst nightmare and your happiest moment. It's A&E, isn't it? <laughs> what can I tell you? It's A&E. <sighs> Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually at A&E in um, King's College. No, serious. So that's her I'm trying to track down. Are you going to put your Malcolm voice on? <laughs> Can the registrar covering recess please come to recess? Malcolm is one of the lead consultants in charge of the whole emergency department. Probably the reason I'm in, in emergency medicine, and my, my mother will confirm this, that I've been in hospital a lot of times. <laughs> Kate's, Kate's traumatic. What, what are you? I'm, what I'm are just you? ED recess this morning. Oh, well, that's nice. Breaking legs, breaking wrists, breaking thumbs, cuts, bumps, being knocked out, mainly playing rugby, falling off my bike. So I may have a, a sort of vested interest in emergency medicine and just having some payback, really, I suppose, because I've been in emergency departments so many times myself. Good morning, King's A&E. Okay. Thanks, babe. Um, a 93-year-old man that's been knocked over just outside. A 93-year-old man's been hit on Denmark Hill by a car. And he's bleeding from his ear. And... We literally got a one-minute pre-alert. Oh. Yeah, I've just got one coming and I've got another trauma coming in here as well. Your ears do prick up because you think, 93-year-old guy and was struck by a car in a hit and run that didn't stop. This is going to be harder than a 20-year-old. Yeah. Ernest has been hit by a driver who didn't stop. It happened just a few hundred yards from the hospital. This poor chap, 20 minutes ago, half hour ago, is walking to get his pension, so we've, we've got to get him back to normal, and that's, that's the goal of treating anyone who's ill. You want to get them back to the state they're in before the accident happened. Two, three. <laughs> OK, this is Bernie Maloney. He is 93 years old. Uh, walking across the road, he's been hit by a car. Uh, not sure too much of the details as the car drove off. Uh, he has an obvious fracture to his right uh, leg below the knee. Uh, he's got blood coming out of his left ear. No loss of consciousness. Um, he's recalling everything that's happened today. OK, thank you. Trachea central. Yep. Airway is clear. No subcutemia. No pebble fractures, no flail, no chest wall bruising. Okay, take medication. We're just yeah. going to have to cut your clothes off. Yeah. All right. We'll keep you covered up, don't worry. Ernest is conscious, but may have internal injuries. Bernie, you're in King's College Hospital, OK? He needs to be stabilised before being taken to scan. We got hit by a car, sir. I want to fall over. You want to fall over? Okay. Oh. You're not going to fall anywhere, OK? You're on the bed, you're doing fine. I want to fall... I want to fall over. Let me go now. Let me go now. Keep your hands away, Bernie. 
you know, agitation is not good. You know, if you're agitated, your metabolic rate's going to go up. You're probably going to bleed more. You're going to dislodge clot. Hold oh, my hands. I want to fall over. I want to fall. I want to fall over. Uh, it probably is kinder to get him off to sleep. You know, we don't like sedating trauma patients, but he's gone from being reasonably alert to actually being quite agitated in quite a short space of time. Fanny. Fanny. Ninety three year old Ernest has been hit by a vehicle whilst walking to collect his pension. Decrease our entry right hemi thorax. He is only he is fluctuating. He has an injury to his head and the hospital suspect he's broken his pelvis. Is the trauma line coming? Trauma line's being prepared here. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, please, yeah. <laughs> You've got a femoral pulse, good. Katie, Katie, would you grab the ultrasound for me as well? Sorry, thank you. Um, his rhythm is more irregular than it was on the monitor. Blood. I don't feel a pulse now. Okay. Okay, it's got no pulse now. Okay, start CPR, folks. Okay, so that happened at 10.44, is start of downtime. Uh, Andrew, start writing. My issue, he needs filling rather than squeezing. I think this guy needs filling aggressively. Every minute that, that you don't get blood to your brain, to your heart, your heart, your brain starts to die out of the rest of your organs. If you're young and fit, it helps. But at 93, you, you often don't have much hope. Your body can't cope as well with what happens to you. Sorry? Are you happy with that line? No. Oh, okay. um, well, we've got blood going, we've got 214 that are good. Oh, so let's keep the blood going. I want to fill him rather than squeeze him. Mm. You do CPR in cycles, so you do it for two minutes and, and then you just have to reassess. We've got about another 30 yep. seconds and we will be at Rest two minutes. We're just coming up to two minutes. Do you have a pulse? I can't feel ephemeral. Sometimes we do have to accept that that, that life is finite, that, that we can't play God with people. And, and that there is a natural end point to it. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. No, I do have a femoral pulse. You have femoral. I've got a femoral pulse. I've got a good femoral pulse here at the moment. Right, have we got more blood ready to go? Uh, let's have a look at this. Yeah. yeah, blood pressure is 66 systolic, folks. Thank you, Abby. The resus team have managed to save Ernest's Sorry. life. Andrew, you got the tally running? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. He can now be taken for a full body scan. Smith instead of Bendro Metafluor's yeah, eyes eyed. <laughs> or Frank. Are you going to assess me? Yes. Ah, lovely. What's, what's happened? I uh, fell onto one of them concrete posts and oh. Jamie 
Is it a concrete floor? Yeah, one of them concrete posts, yeah. It's only a short one. I fell straight onto it. Did you hit your head? No, dear. No, no, no. That no. no, wouldn't have been so bad if I had it done. Before the war, <laughs> my parents sent me to piano lessons. Uh, used to pay ha half a crown a lesson. <laughs> Right. Two and six. Yeah. No, twelve. Two and six. Two and sixpence. Which is what? what? Like no, twelve and a half. Pence. Twelve and a half pence. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's oh, about. Blimey. I think it's about ten. You're just taking me right back, you. Ten pounds now, I think. It's something like that now, if oh. not more. <laughs> not more. Um, but then the war came, you see, and yeah. we were evacuated, and it mm. all went by the board. So, but I, I can still do a little bit of a tinkle, yeah. but not very well. 83-year-old William is in King's after cutting off the top of his finger doing metalwork. Last time I had this, it went out of my teeth out. Oh. He needs seven stitches. You still feeling that? <sighs> I do like the elderly, because they are just, they're so funny. You start to inject or whatever you're doing, and you look at the faces, and it's like, and then they grip the tooth, and then they. And you say, is it too much? No, it's okay, dear. You carry on. I don't know. I know people take pills and all the sorts of things, but I'm not a very good pill taker. I don't believe them them a great deal. If I'd have had a couple of Guinness, I'd have been a damn sight better off than all those antibiotics, I tell you. <laughs> See, if I'd have been in the war, they'd have just chopped it off. <laughs> it bloody hurt, though. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> right, I'm just going to put this little dressing on. <laughs> You'd never use that as a condom, could you? <laughs> no, not really. He's <laughs> <laughs> <It is> rude. <laughs> Don't mind me being frivolous, do you? Because, <laughs> because it's stinging a bit. <laughs> you carry I'm on, trying darling. To, trying to take my mind off of it a bit. Let's send you round for an x ray, then, darling. All right, thanks very much. <laughs> Come on up here and I'll show you where to go for your x ray. <laughs> Sean and Renata are both stand-up comics. Sean's hurt his shoulder, falling over on the way to work. Sorry. I know, but I can't help but say sorry. It's horrible seeing you like this. So <laughs> It's not funny. Yeah, it's not funny. I can say it's definitely broken. Am I going to have to give you sponge baths? <laughs> if you come for the miners' department, did they send you for an X-ray? Yes. Take a seat on those chairs in that department there at the end. Okay. Ninety-three-year-old Ernest has been in resus for nearly two hours. We go to CT. He has enough blood pressure for us to get this done, That's That's and we have a window. Yeah, sure the hospital are concerned about the damage to his head and pelvis. We have resus drugs. We have blood. We have scoop. We have enough oxygen. We got monitoring. Okay, breaks off slowly away from the wall. Okay, nice and slowly. A couple of feet, and yeah, all clear. He's finally stable enough to be taken to scan. Ernest's niece has arrived. Malcolm must break the news of her uncle's injuries. When the relatives arrive, they're obviously very distressed. Hey, Mrs. Maloney's niece. Oh, yeah. Mr. Maloney's yes, niece. Yes. Hi there, I'm, I'm Malcolm Tunnicliffe. I'm one of the consultants here. 
That's probably the one thing I remember most of all about all these people talking to their relatives afterwards and, th and their reaction. What, what do you understand that's happened so far? That he's been knocked yeah. over okay. and he's quite serious. Yeah. And it's quickly become apparent that he's got a head injury. We don't know if there's any injury inside of his head yet. And for a very brief period, about two minutes, his heart stopped as well. Oh, my God. A brief chat like that is... It's really... I suppose it's quite heartwarming in a way that when Ernest first came in, it, you know, it's a 93-year-old guy. We know nothing else about him. But all of a sudden, she's told me that, you know, he's an uh, anti-aircraft gunner during the war, um, that she's told him off for being a silly so-and-so for walking two miles to Brixton to get his pension. It, it makes it a lot more personal to us as well. When he came out of the army, he worked for the gas board. That's where he was until he retired. And then from then on, you know, he just lived on his own and, and just got on with his life, you know. I know that he used to walk for miles and miles. He was just a healthy man and he was very strong, very strong. Two years ago, he stopped riding his push bike because he fell off of it. I said, well, you better go over to doctors. Doctors? I haven't seen a doctor for 40 years. <laughs> 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 That's a horrid pelvis. Wow, and it's a suspicious it's base of skull as well. He had blood coming out of his left ear. He's a fighter. And I was just hoping he'll get through this. tomorrow. Good. I'm off Saturday, Sunday because I'm packing the cases. Working Monday, Tuesday. And then flying Wednesday. Flying Thursday. Wednesday's the waxing. Wednesday's waxing day. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have a waxing day, haven't oh, you? Oh, darling, the yeah. idea. Sweetie. I know. You had high blood pressure earlier. Do you suffer from high blood pressure? No, I've never known myself to suffer from high blood pressure, but I haven't seen a doctor for about 20 years. Really? So I don't, oh. I don't, I don't feel ill. The hospital's noticed William has high blood pressure. Before leaving, he needs to have it checked out. What you must realise is that years ago, and particularly around about the war time, there were not, those facilities weren't there. And not only that, if you wanted to see the doctor, you had to pay him a shilling. And people didn't do it. And to be honest with you, the way, the way things are, forgive me for saying so, I reckon a high percentage of people just waste the doctor's time. You know, all they want is a few pills to pep them up. I, I, you know. I'm like you, I don't ever go to the doctor unless I feel unwell. You know, I mean, I met a man who called the doctor in because, because he'd got a bloody boil. In the old days, you would have cured the boil of your own volition. And I, I didn't have boils, but that was the, that was the format. You didn't go down to the doctor. You couldn't pay a shilling. You'd get a bit of bread and make a poultice. 
It's such a waste of time. I mean, no disrespect, I think. Mm -hmm. All the time that you've spent with me in this place, I mean, it's out of this world. Yeah, but you need uh, our care. So, yeah, I know, but it's so ultra costly. No wonder the NHS costs a lot. Christ almighty. My favourite group of patients are the elderly patients. I think massively it's their generation. They were taught differently. They they understood that nursing and, and, and medicine was something that was sought. Uh, it was very well respected. It's well known. There is a lot of people that come into hospital that don't need to come into hospital. I but you hospital. aren't one of those people. You needed to seek our advice yeah. today and our services. And you haven't wasted our time and everything well, that we provided for you. It seems as if I have, actually. You haven't all at all. people. Yeah. Honestly, you haven't. Too easy to forget people. You know, oh, don't worry. They're, they're old now. Um, they're, they're not important. They're massively important. They're still a member of our community. Hopefully, you, you'll be able to uh, get as much use back in your finger and it won't be, you won't, you won't affect any of your work. And that's oh, the main thing for yeah. you, to be able to continue doing what you do. I'd like, I'd like to do. carry on for a couple of years. I need to stimulate my mind. By observation, the number of people who've retired and not have what I would consider a, a stimulus, I'm afraid that quite a number of them, by, by my acquaintance, have sunk into oblivion. I'd have worked, well, I started work in 1948, so I'd have done my fair share. <laughs> no man can go on forever. My father died at 86, and he was still interested in things and did things. I hope I can just hang on till I'm 85. If I keel over suddenly, then that would be something that I would say that was a good life. So she got a slightly red tongue. And the GP said you need to go to A&E. You don't have any house come to any, no food, no lighting, no water, no boyfriend, no girlfriend come to any. <laughs> we all have each other. The doctor or nurse practitioner for you from the far doors. Any idea how long the wait is? Mm, let's have a look. Roughly two hours. Could okay. be quicker, but that's rough. Okay. Roughly. All right. Remember Tiffany from EastEnders? Yeah. She's been slated for putting on a little bit of weight. And all of a sudden I heard this crash. Yeah. And a yell and went out into the hall and he was laying flat on his back. Oh dear. Thank you very much. Kevin Payne has a history of heart problems. Ow. Ow. Still hurts? He's come to A&E with mum, Joyce, after he fell on the stairs, hurting his ribs. So he's got cardiomyopathy, is that right? Does he take medication for that? Yes. OK. All right, and then you have learning disabilities as well, is that right? Yes, yes. yes. Was born like that? Yeah. OK. Did it, is there a diagnosis? No. No? Yeah. OK, all right. He's very tall. You must struggle to find beds. I think any woman that gives birth to a handicapped child, mentally or physically handicapped, her life changes forever. Because you have a, a child that grows into a man and is still a child. Hi. Don't be frightened. You're a bit frightened. Yeah. OK. Well, I'm not scary. Yeah. I know You're you don't know me. bigger than she is, so don't exactly. worry. Exactly. I'm tiny. I won't hurt you. Yeah, well, no, I didn't think you would. He's 52, and when I had him, I was 28. And although I knew there was something wrong with him, the medical profession wouldn't confirm it until he was nearly three. And then they told me they didn't think he would ever be able to care for himself. All right, so can you remember what happened last night? don't remember. You don't remember? Did you sit, were you sit? These days, things are much different. But um, you didn't talk about things like that. You didn't complain about things like that. You just accepted them and, and got on with it. Were you sick? No. OK. 
okay? Did you bang your head at all? No. Not that you remember. I asked him that. Yeah. He didn't really know. All right. He said it just hurts. It just hurts. Yeah. All right. Okay. He knows that he's not very well and he gets upset. He said to me, could I have a brain transplant, Mum? And I said, well, if you had a brain transplant, you wouldn't be my Kevin, and I wouldn't want another Kevin. I like the one I've got. Do I have another x-ray? Do you want me to have another x-ray? Do I want you to have an x-ray? No, not yet, because we don't x-ray if we, unless we think there's something going on with the lungs underneath the ribs. OK? All right. We'll do some tests. Can I ask you to take your shirt off? Yeah. And I want to get you some pain medication. I'll be back with you in a minute. Can you okay? sit yourself up? He's gorgeous, he really is. He comes up to me and kisses me on the top of my head sometimes and says, I love you, Mum. <laughs> Which doesn't do anything for your waterworks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, come on. I'm sorry, I'm a bit pain. <laughs> You're pain by name and pain by nature. <laughs> The 93-year-old Ernest's scan results show he has an injury to his skull. His leg is broken and his pelvis has been shattered. So, impact there, isn't it? Yeah, because the bumper height is car height, not normal mm. drive height. Yeah. How do you do that? I mean, look, oh, he's in bits. And, and it's not the sort of thing where you don't know you've hit someone. No. There are occasions when it happens. He's got you can't tell me that someone is driving their car, hits someone and doesn't know they've done it. You know, I, I remember running over a rabbit and I knew I'd run over a rabbit. So, you know, you just think... Bleep me out. up because we didn't have our dad around so he brought me and my sisters up it's like a dad to us he bought me my first push bike taught me how to ride it he just used to come around have dinner with us always on a Sunday um, Christmas time there he'd be with the presses for us all. Would you be happy if I brought his niece in? Yes, I was going to say, do you want me to go to speak I don't know. I can't say that. I couldn't bear to see him like that, you know. Never in a million years I'd think that that would happen to him. Just chatted away in general, really. I just went through the names of who's coming up to see him and, you know, who was coming up that particular day and someone's coming up tonight and just chat and chat and chat at him, really. Squeezing his hands and you could feel, you know, little movements and that. You know, he was fighting. He was fighting to live, That he really was. Okay, I kept saying to him, what on earth's happened to you? But I couldn't believe it. Couldn't honestly.
You two live together. Is there anyone else at home? No. It's just two of you? Yeah. It's a bit of a menace, really. Kevin still has pain in his ribs after his collapse. The hospital are doing tests. I don't know what we're going to do with you. I keep saying I'm going to send him back and get a girl, but he won't have that one. <laughs> well, my husband could never accept that Kevin was handicapped. He used to try and make him do things that I knew he was incapable of doing, and we used to have arguments about it. You were born in Dulwich Hospital? Mm. He's talking more now. I think he's starting to relax. He's you feeling comfier in here now? He's very nervous yeah, about coming to hospital, but once he's on. there, he's OK. And yeah. most people are so nice to him, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's your smile. It's very infectious. <laughs> It's something you have all your life. You, you worry in case you did something that made him like he is, and you worry about what happens to him after I die. Pull yourself up. I'll help. Oh, you're very heavy. There we go. I'm getting old, that's the trouble. <laughs> I was 80 a fortnight ago. So, um, I don't know, I survive, I expect. I don't know how long for, but I uh, will keep going. Oh, deep breath in and out for me again. Breathe in and out through your mouth. Open your mouth and breathe. Like me, watch me. Yeah, same as me. It sounds terrible, but you, you always hope that they'll go before you, but... Um, I'd be lost without him because he helps me and I help him. In other words, we can't live without each other. <laughs> okay, you can get dressed and give that time. It, sh it will heal, but it takes a while, so no rugby. No wrestling. Work in the kitchen. You work in a kitchen? All right, no lifting anything super heavy. All right, even though you're the big one. All right, but I don't want you lifting heavy bags of spuds, yeah? All right, deal? Then I'll let you go home. That way out, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, love. Hello there. I'm in the hospital and I can't leave yet. They've just, they've just given me an in, a tetanus injection. Well, I cut my finger, so I won't be able to get any fish. So what I'll have to do is we'll have to make do and mend when I get home. If you think you've got Nelson Mandela, Wilson Churchill didn't become Prime Minister until he was 70. Mandela didn't become, you know, Prime Minister until he was over 70. And we say that our elderly are not capable. They're be ridiculous. Of course they are. Uh, put some ice on it, take your ibuprofen, give it two days rest, and then start doing a few shoulder exercises. I can't actually see me retiring from this job. I can't see it. Even if they have to get in transport to bring me in and take me home. And I've got a Zimmer frame with me, you know, blood pressure machine and my stethoscope in the little basket on the front. I can't see me stopping this job because I love it. Why should I stop something I love? Nobody walks out my A&E department looking scruffy. There you go. All right. Oh, I did you. Just this is the this is the right. Yeah. This yeah. These yeah. are the bad leg. So as you put those forward, put your bad leg forward too, oh, and then right, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Come on through. Uh. <sighs> okay. Right, my name's Tim. I'm one of the orthopaedic docs. Hi, Tim. Hi, uh, so what happened today? Uh, I fell on my way into work. <coughs> <sighs> You're getting spasms. Oh, it's so painful. It's so painful.
Take up the CVP monitoring, yeah. It's been almost five hours since Ernest was hit by a car. I think we should probably try and get those away today because it may shape, shape what we do depending on what they say. He's showing signs of consciousness. Lactate. It was his lactate seven, seven, wasn't it? And this was at minus six. Okay. How much blood have you made? Six ten, and four. Six, ten total, wasn't it? Yeah, six and four. Yeah, he's had yeah. six and blood, four of And he's had, you know, had the work, so he's off to surgical six, critical six, care, surely. Mm. His niece is just with him as well. It's frustrating when things like this happen because there's nothing I can do about it to go and catch the person who's done it. And you, you can sort of feel quite helpless. Oh, and the lactate was seven. It was seven? Yes. Yeah. So that is the most fantastic team effort. You've got to treat individuals in front of you. You can't bracket people into all 90-year-olds should be treated like this because there are some 90-year-olds that are absolutely fighting fit. And it, it, it's just shocking, really. And, you know, a lot was done for him. Ernest is now stable enough to be moved to intensive care for further treatment. I think, really, you know, they was very honest with me. Um, they done a really good job on him. They made him comfortable. He, he had a broken leg. They literally plastered that for him. So, you know, he, they, they cared for him. They really cared for him. to see him in the hospital. It only opened one eye and he was and the other one was closed. And when I sat there next to him and I was telling him all about what we used to do, and all of a sudden he opened his other eye and he smiled at me. He so sort of knew that I was there, you know. the doctor that saw him. She was very nice, actually, and handled him beautifully. Can I apologise to the staff at King's? I've got to say, I'm sorry I took up all their time. They must have something better to do with their lives. They was actually going to operate on him, you know. Um, The injuries to his head, I don't think he would have survived it. It would have been so much nicer had he gone to sleep and not got, woke up one morning. We could have accepted that because of his age. But to be taken from us like that, 
It's, it's wrong. It's really wrong. I got bitten. What? Another GBF? Oh. Yeah, G and Metadrone. Knife stuck in back. That's all we knew at the moment. You can see the knife is still in situ. That's why we're not normal, because it's normal to us to have people stabbed, shot, falling off bikes on a Saturday night. That's the knife, but it's out now. It's a big knife. It's a really big knife. Thank you.